All right, my last video covered what it feels like to push. And so this one is going to go over some ways to make it a little bit easier and to prepare for pushing. Um, there's no guarantee that these techniques will just make it a breeze, but I'm hopeful that they will help. So a really great way that you can prepare your perineum and your mind for pushing is something called the perineal tissue massage. And I have a video on this channel that really goes in depth with it, but I'll give you a quick tutorial. Um, so with this massage, it's not really a massage, you coat either your uh, middle and pointer finger with an organic oil that like almond oil, jojoba oil, or your thumb, you insert it in the vagina about two inches, and then you follow this like U-shaped pattern, really pushing down in the tautest area, um, the taint, because this is usually, if you're gonna tear, it's going to be down in this area. So like really rubbing, and doing this for about 10, 15 minutes, listening to a relaxation recording, doing your deep breathing, pushing it to the point of discomfort if you can, because this is where that mental side comes into it. Because if you realize that like, okay, I can feel discomfort in my perineum, but this deep breathing, this relaxation recording helps me move through the discomfort. That can help you for any discomfort that you experience when you're actually pushing the baby out. And this exercise, it helps the perineum become more elastic, more flexible. It it's incredible with reducing your chances of tearing and it helps the vagina bounce back a little bit quicker. So I recommend starting to do this massage about like starting 34 or 35 weeks of gestation. And if you can, doing it every day, at least for a couple of minutes. In addition to that, we want to get baby in the optimal position. So in my last video, I mentioned that baby, if baby is in the posterior or sunny side up position, which means that their face is pointing towards the front of your body, that can make it harder to push them out. So ideally, we want them obviously head down and we want their face um, pointing towards the back of your body. So here's the back of their head coming out. It makes it easier for, the, for them to come out. Um, so if your doctor has let you, or your midwife has let you know that the baby is not in that position, um, there are a few things that we can do before you go into labor to hopefully get baby into that ideal position. So getting into child's pose and like really sticking your butt up in the air can help because this can help baby disengage from the pelvis and turn into that proper position babies organically really do want to get in that, into that position if they have the space to do it. You can also kind of sway your hips while you do this. Try to do it once a day for a couple minutes. You can watch TV while you do it, listen to a book tape or audiobook. Uh, getting on your hands and knees and kind of gyrating your hips. Same thing, helps to get baby out of the pelvic structure so they can turn. Um, but, but as often as possible, you want to sit in a position where your pelvis and your belly is tilted forward. Like, so if you think about a bucket seat when you're like kind of hunched back and your pelvis is like this, that's not a great position in regards to getting baby to to turn out of that sunny side up. So um, a great way to do this is to sit on a wedge cushion and this kind of pushes your, your pelvis and your belly forward. And if you're sitting on a birthing ball, make sure that your knees are lower than your hips. You don't wanna be like hunched down. Uh, sleeping on your side instead of your back is really great. Avoiding sitting in bucket seats or like really leaning back in the couch. Ideally, you have a lot of pillows propped up behind you so you can sit up straight and again have that pelvis tilted forward. And then, oh, and then I, in the video, um, I have a video how to turn a posterior baby and that has all sorts of additional suggestions on this channel. Okay, preparing your pelvic structure. So you can do that by getting in that child's pose, getting into a deep squat with somebody spotting you to make sure you can get back up, and getting in that cat, the cat cow position. So you're on your hands and knees and you're arching your back. And that cat cow can really help to lengthen your pelvic floor muscles, prepare your pelvis for birth. Uh, practicing breathing down while pooping. Okay, so breathing down is a gentle alternative to that like 
heavy duty pushing, which a lot of care providers are used to recommending. Um, but in hypnobirthing, which is the childbirth um, methodology that I teach, they teach this um, breathing down or this birth breathing. So what you do is you take in a strong, quick inhalation and then you exhale. Envisioning the power of the breath going down your throat, down through the uterus, and out the vagina in this in this J formation. And you'll make a sound in the back of your throat, and you'll feel that pressure and that power and that vibration in the back of your throat. Okay, so practice with me. Breathe in. And then... And as you do this, you'll feel your muscles kind of bear down, and it also supports your natural expulsive reflex. I recommend doing this when you poop because it helps to convince you that you don't have to do that like heavy duty pushing because a lot of times when we poop, right, we're like bearing down like this. But if you do the birth breathing, it's pretty amazing to see how effective it is at not only getting fecal matter out, but babies as well. So that can make the pushing experience a lot less exhausting because you're not exerting as much effort. It's also more gentle on baby because when you're doing that traditional pushing, you're holding your breath usually, and that usually causes a drop in baby's heart rate because they're not getting as much oxygen. Um, and it helps to reduce tearing because you're not having those forceful pushes. You're just allowing your perineum to gently unfold and open. Something else to do is asking your care provider how they typically guide women through the pushing phase. This can give you an understanding of the instructions that they might provide and help you determine if their way of doing it resonates with you. Um, if not, you can talk to them about alternative ways of, of supporting you through that process. You can also think of how you want to be guided through the pushing or the breathing down. Do you want that like more intense, like go, 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 push, 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 or a more gentle way of somebody saying, okay, all right, now taking a deep breath, push the baby down. Think about what might resonate with you and put that in your birth preferences. And then remind people when it comes time to push that like, so for example, I think something I had in my birth preferences was I request calm prompts from only one person, no loud cheerleading, please. But again, you might want that like heavy duty cheerleading, which is totally fine. Utilizing the laboring down technique. So the laboring down technique means that even after you're 10 centimeters dilated, that you don't really do any pushing at all until you feel like your body is uncontrollably pushing the baby out. So your natural expulsive reflex will continue to push the baby down without you doing anything. And talk about a gentle way of getting the baby out. You're not putting in any effort. You're just allowing your body to gently unfold and that natural expulsive reflex to, to get the baby out. A lot of midwives really encourage this because it's such a gentle way for, for the baby to come out, really reduces the chance of tearing. And then again, usually towards the end, you'll feel like my, my body, like I can't help but bear down. I, I have to. Um, choosing a position that takes weight off of your tailbone can really help with, with the pushing. So standing, kneeling, squatting, being on all fours or lying on your side can all help to take pressure off of, of the pelvis. Um, that can lead to an easier emergence. And I also recommend changing positions if the, if baby's progress starts to slow. So say, for example, you're squatting, you're pushing, you're pushing, you're pushing, and you're in the squatting position for about half an hour. And the the, the midwife or the doctor is like, you know what, the baby's head's not, you're not really making much progress when you're pushing. That would be a good time to try a new position. You can also ask the midwife or the doctor to apply a warm compress to your perineum as you're pushing to help to soften the skin and the muscles and then to apply oil to the, the perineum as well. That's really great for reducing your chances of tearing. I also recommend going completely limp between contractions or surges because again, especially if you're doing the heavy duty pushing, you're, you're using a lot of energy and it's really easy to exhaust yourself. So in between, just go totally ragdoll, close your eyes, don't talk to anybody, take deep breaths, allow yourself to rejuvenate in between those contractions. And finally, consider having somebody hold a mirror in between your legs when you're pushing baby out. This might make you recoil, be like, 
absolutely not. I don't want to see that. But for some women, it's motivating to see the head coming out and that gives them the like motivation to do those last few pushes. But if you think that would gross you out, there's no need to do it. Totally optional. All right, if you have any questions about how to push a baby out, how to make it a little bit easier, what it feels like, let me know in the comments below.